In this video, I'm gonna show you how I set up a brand new GarageBand project to record a new song here in GarageBand on my iPhone. So let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and this is Studio Live Today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And in this one, this is part three of my songwriting series where I have been writing a song from scratch here on the channel. Now, what I'm going to do today is actually show you the process I use to set up my track here in GarageBand because there's a bunch of different ways you can do it, but I'm going to show you my way. So the first thing that we need to do is we're in iCloud Drive. I'm going to go into my GarageBand for iOS. I'm going to tap Create New Document, and we have a nice, fresh, blank document ready to go. Now, the first instrument I'm going to record as my scratch track is my acoustic guitar. So it'll take me in here. I'll make sure I'm in Audio Recorder. I'll tap on instrument and it will drop me in here. Now it'll default, if we tap in the top left, it'll default to the acoustic guitar nice room. If you wanted to change that, we just tap on that one and we can select whatever we want. I'm going with nice room. I just think it's the best default sound that we can then tweak with our mixes, our plugins and our, cue when we, our EQ when we get to that part of the track. So we'll come back out here. Now the first thing that I do, and this is a bit weird, is I'm gonna record a couple of seconds of nothing. I'm just gonna hit record and I'm I'm going to record a couple of seconds of absolute nothing. The reason for this is that this is now put this as a song, as a project file in GarageBand. If we don't do that, we go back out to try and name it. It won't work because the second thing I do is actually name my project. How many people? Hands up if you've got my song 37, my song 103. That is because... GarageBand doesn't let you name your project before you start on it. So I always, well not always, I try to remember to do this, come back out here, and now what I can actually do is rename this. So this is perfect, and uh, we'll just call it perfect for now. Uh, so we can name it whatever we want, but that way I now know that this is my song perfect, and it will start actually calling it that and naming it that. Now what, I, what I'll probably normally do is also put a version number in. I like putting V1, I like to version number my tracks as I go along. So we'll go back into my track now, and there we go. So we're ready to set this up. There's a couple of things I do before I hit record and start recording in my tracks, and that's what I'm going to show you now. So the most important thing to set here when you're setting up a new track is your tempo, your beats per minute, how fast your track is going to be. So what I'm gonna do is tap in the settings here in the top right. We're gonna scroll down to tempo, tap on that one. And what we can actually do is either dial in the tempo. So if we tap and hold, we can drag up and drag down to dial in a tempo. I think this song's gonna be a bit around 130 BPM based on the demo that I've done so far. So let's just sing along. What I like to do is sing along to the chorus and then just uh, tap Tap it in here, tap the tempo. So this one is, life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. So, whoops, I've, <laughs> life doesn't have to be perfect. To be, yeah, so it's coming out around that 133, 134 mark. I always go even numbers just because I'm a bit strange like that. I'm going to go 134. What I've learned is I tend to go a bit too slow here, and I'd rather a song feel like it's pushing along than dragging. So 130 would probably be around the right, but we're going to go 134. Now, the reason it's important to get your tempo right is that once you record in live instruments like a guitar and you change the tempo, it will not change the speed of your guitar. You need to get it right or you need to re-record it. And no problem, when we record the guitar scratch track, which I'll be doing later today, if it sounds too fast or too slow, we can come in here and change the tempo. But do that early. Get your tempo set as early in the piece as you can. Otherwise, you're going to run into trouble if you're trying to re-record a bunch of live instruments and vocals here in GarageBand. The next thing I like to do is to change the key signature. So in the top right again on our spanner icon, scroll down and here where it's got C major, let's flip this up to E major, which happens to be the key of this song. Now it's not gonna matter so much if you're recording mostly live instruments like guitars and vocals and the rest, but if you wanted to add in any other virtual instruments, so say I'll hit plus, say I wanted to come in here and add in a piano sound. Yes, I can, I can play it in manually because I know how to play an E chord except that was an E7. But if I wanted to say use the chord strips mode, I can come over here and now, 
I can actually play the chords here without having to really think about it. It just helps me if I wanted to then transpose things around. If you put it in the right key to start with, again, what is it? The proper planning prevents poor performance, the five Ps. Uh, yeah, you might have learned that in the business world. But anyway, yes, it's the same here in music that the five Ps, proper planning prevents poor performance is true. So the more you plan up front, the easier it's going to be when you start recording your track. So next we need to talk about sections. So if you've used GarageBand before or maybe you're brand new to it, you'll probably realize that you only get eight bars by default here. And what we can do is change that up and we can turn it into automatic or we can actually set the number of bars. So what I'll do is I'll press this little inconveniently located plus button right here in the top right. And that will bring me into my song sections section. And then what we can do is section A here, we can tap this. Now there's a few strategies you can use. If you just want to record your first scratch track and you don't know how long each section is going to be you can tap automatic you can then record as long as you like and it will define the length of your song based on that first track I don't suggest it because I like a little bit more planning, as I say. Uh, so what you can then do, what other people do, is they just go, hmm, give me 320 tracks. And then they'll come back out here and they've got one big section of 320 tracks. Now that's okay, but you lose the flexibility of having sections and being able to move things around and change things easily. So I don't tend to like that. So we'll hit the plus button again. See, I told you it's convenient. You can miss it very easily. Hit the plus button. We'll come back here. We'll drag this back all the way down by the way if you don't if you don't just tap on these individual ones if you want to make big moves tap and hold in the middle and drag your finger up or drag down it's a quick way to make changes here in GarageBand so we're going to go back to eight there now what I like to do is actually set up my song sections so the way that I do it we'll flip over here to my screen so you can see here I've got on my desktop here of my PC I've put together my song sections and this is the way I do it you can represent it however you like you can use graph paper you can put it on a spreadsheet whatever but I just do it simply here so here's my chord progression for the intro I've then got my verse of 16 bars pre-chorus 8 bars chorus 10 an interlude of eight, verse two, pre-chorus eight, chorus, bridge, and then the final chorus, I've just given myself 60 bars because I haven't really worked out how long I'm going to trail out here with this. So that is my setup. So what I'll do, I won't show you the whole thing because it's going to take me probably five or 10 minutes. You don't need to watch all that. But what I'm going to do is section A is eight bars. That's cool. What I now want to do is add a second section. So I'm going to tap add here. Now, if I tap on the I button here, I can drag this up to 16 bars. Tap on back. There we go. We've got section A, 8, section B, 16. Now, here's where the problem comes in because we can't actually name our sections. So what I do is I do it in reverse here. I instead put my A's, B's, and C's over here on my actual uh, my actual OneNote document so that I know which ones these are. So we've got A and B, which is intro and verse. We then need eight bars for a pre-chorus. So we'll tap add. It's added eight bars by default. So we're good there. And then our chorus is going to be 10. That's going to be section D. So we'll add D there. And then we'll add. We'll tap the I. And then we'll go up to 10 bars. So I'm going to rinse and repeat this all the way through. I'm going to label them here in my document, in my notes, so that I know which one is which. And then we're going to set up some drum guide tracks. That sounds like fun, doesn't it? Anyway, I'll go do this boring bit and then I'll return to do some drums. All right, we are done. That only took about two or three minutes, but again, you didn't need to watch it. Now, if we tap through each of these sections, what you'll notice over on the left is it's going to highlight each of these sections as we go through. So what we can do is say we've got section E selected here. If we drop back into our project, it will zoom us in on that section. So this is handy for your editing that you're going to be doing later on in your project. If we tap the section button again, if you want to work on all your sections at once, which we'll do when we first start recording, just tap all sections, tap back on your track, and there you go. And if we zoom in, you can see at the top here, we've got our labels. So they're not particularly well labeled, but you can see there that bar nine there is B. As we scroll through here, bar 25 is C and D and so on. So our sections are there. Yes, it would be great if we could name them. Hey, GarageBand. Hey, Apple. How about naming some sections in our next version? Anyway, we are set up here. We're ready to go. Now, I promised some drums and that is the next thing I do. Before I record a note, I don't like to rock out to this sound. I don't know about you. Does that really inspire you to give your best performance? No, doesn't for me either. So I add in some drums. So what I would generally do is use a drummer track to actually set up my basic drum pattern. And I don't go to a lot of effort with this, but you can you can do it two ways. And I'll show you both ways here. So sometimes if I want to get super fancy, what I'll do is I'll come in here to my loops. 
up here. And let's just say, I don't think, who, who's going to be here? Uh, is it Levi? Is he the guy I'm thinking of? We'll search him out here. No, he's not the guy we want. He's a song. Oh, maybe. Songwriter. Uh, we've unsearched there. Go back to Levi. Should have planned this out a bit better. So what you can actually do is you can see here that our songwriter drummer, so Levi's our songwriter drummer, what we can do is we can actually use these different, in fact, let's do it here. Let's go for it. So we can actually throw Levi's intro here into the track. So we'll throw it in like that. Now what it's going to do is it's going to fill up the entire track like that. So it's going to go all the way through. So if you just wanted the same pattern all the way through, if we hit play, you would have that all the way through. So that is okay. But what I would actually do with this is if we just drag all the way back there, you can see here that we can just have this, oh, drag a little bit further back to make sure it's just in that first section, like so, then it's just the intro. And look, it actually even calls it intro there now. So if we wanted to actually line this up, we could then come in here, grab the next one, and we could go uh, to verse. And if we wanted to drop the verse in here, like so. Uh, yeah, there we go. Now, actually, one thing I haven't ever tried is instead of doing all this scrubbing, there we go, all the scrubbing back and forth, can we actually just drop it into one section? Let's tap the section button. I'm learning here. Uh, section C, which is where our chorus comes in, if we're just in section C and we go to our drummer loop and we grab, not twin fin, where are you? where's your chorus? Where's your chorus here, Levi? We grab your chorus and throw that in here. Is that just going to put it in that one section? Have I just, just... Oh, I have. Look at that. So, yeah. So, you can actually just select each section and put the right drum in there. So, if we go section D, I'll just check my notes here. What was section D? Uh, oh, that was my pre-chorus. So, section D is our actual chorus. So, yeah. If we were going to do here, we come here, we'll grab the chorus again, and we throw it in like that then yeah, so that is a way we can build this out and that's going to work well. However, I don't know that this is going to actually work. So if we just, uh, let's just listen to what these drums sound like here. Yeah, it's not really the beat that I'm going for with this one. So what I'm going to do is we're going to delete all that. So you can use that method. It does work well. I have used it plenty of times before. We'll delete all of that and we'll actually delete this drummer track. What I can do is if we'll just do it manually and we'll just get a basic beat of what we want. So if we hit plus again, we'll scroll across and we'll grab our drummer again, like so. We'll tap on that. And then the sort of drummer I want, it's probably going to be someone like Kyle for this or Logan. Uh, let's stick with Kyle. And we'll just pick one that you can experiment with these and find the ones you want. But something like Ocean Boulevard might be what we're looking at. All right, so we don't want that sort of, uh, yeah, that sort of funky rhythm. So if we bring this down, because it's just going to be do, la, fa, and have. So it's just do, do, ch, do, do, ch, do, do, ch. So. so what we'll do is we'll bring these back to one and one over here on the right. Change the pattern. And what you notice there is it's actually changing because it's going from one section to the other. So the other thing I'd probably do pretty early on is if we want this to just be like a metronome is I'll drag and delete out all the other parts and then just drag this one part all the way across so that we have just the one sound going. So let's go back to our drummer and just keep dialing this in and making sure this is sounding the way we want it to. I'll just try another kick snare pattern. Nope, next one. Next one. That's the one. So that's going to give me the, the groove that I want because life doesn't have to be perfect, to be wonderful. Yeah, so you can see, see here that it's pretty quick. You can just dial in and get it around about right. Now, there'll be different sections that we'll have in here where maybe I want, might want to vary up the drums. Let's just drag this out to be the whole lot. There we go. Uh, there might be other sections that I want to change up for, say, my bridge. I might want to play along to something else. But I like to keep it simple. And instead of playing along to TikTok, TikTok, like that, I think you'll agree that playing along to that 
even if it's not the perfect section for that part, is going to be okay. And then when we get towards the end of our process, we can change up and vary the drums if we continue to use drummer or record drums or use loops or whatever we want to do. But that is what I do. And what I'll do is I'll drag this track we'll come over here. We'll tap and drag and bring this up to the top here. We'll get rid of this piano track, delete, because what I like to do now to finalize things up is to just sort of map out my tracks now because I know sort of the instrumentation I want. So I'm going to map out and name my tracks so that once I start recording, I don't have to fiddle around with the track types, with adding tracks, with naming tracks. It's all set and ready to go. So let's do that and then we will finish off. So now it's just a matter of naming all of our tracks. So to name a track, we tap right here on the drum icon. We tap again, we tap rename, and now we can delete Kyle. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say drum, uh, drum click, just so we know that this is just our click track for our drum. And then we'll do the same here. We'll tap on this one, we'll tap again, and then we'll hit the rename button. Why can't I see it? And there we go. So we'll put guitar, and you can use whatever naming convention you like, AC, so that's my acoustic guitar, hit done. And then what I can do now is I'll duplicate this out, and I'll duplicate it again. Because I basically I want three acoustic guitar tracks. So what I can do is I'll come in here to my rename. It's just acoustic. Um, and this is going to be my... Um, so this is going to be my secondary rhythm. So I'm just going to call it uh, 2 and then RH. So that will uh, remind me of what this is. Haven't really decided what the third guitar part will be, but it'll be some sort of lead. So I'll rename this guitar acoustic lead. You might be going, Pete, this is painful. Why would you do all this? I'm telling you, it takes you 10 minutes at the start, then you don't think about it. It's nothing worse than being right in the middle of recording all your parts and then having to think about your track setup and your naming. So trust me on this one. If you haven't tried it, give it a go. If you say, hey, it, it, it uh, harshes my mellow and uh, it's not my creative vibe, then don't do it. But everything's worth a try. All right, let's tap here. What we'll do now is we'll add in my vocal because I want a lead vocal. So we'll come here, uh, we'll go to more sounds because the lead vocal I like to use to start with is our punchy presence. So we've got the punchy presence there. We'll go back to our track view here. We'll tap on it. We'll hit rename and then we will delete this one and we will call this vocals lead or vocal lead. Can't spell vocal lead and hit done. Now I'm gonna continue on and do this uh, to add in my backing vocals, to add in my bass guitar. So for bass, what I would do is come here. Uh, now I'm probably gonna use, say, the Stark bass amp sim for my bass, but what we'll do here for, for now is we'll just add an audio recorder track, go to more sounds, we'll just make it uh, custom, not custom, fun. Fun and clean, just so that we've got a track ready and set up. And if I then wanna use my amp sim, I can change it. But yep, we'll tap this, we will rename it, and we'll call it bass. Now, the reason I wanted to show you this one is what we can do is we can also change the icons here. So the drums and the acoustics are fine. They make sense. Vocals make sense. Because this is going to be bass, we can tap on this one, tap again and go icons. And we can tap bass. And we can find one that looks most like my bass. Maybe that one. Hit done. And there you go. So now we've got our track coming together here. So yes, I know this isn't the most glamorous thing. And I promise you though, that if you do this, it is going to make the rest of your process so much more efficient. And I would rather do this now, spend 30 minutes up front, get everything set up. And the beauty part is what you can actually do is save this as a track template. I tend to not use templates. So I'll start from scratch and I don't really know why. But if you wanted to use this as a track template, if you had tracks you do on every single song, all you need to do is come back out here to my songs. You need to duplicate this one, select it, tap it, hit the duplicate button, and then tap on this right here on the name, and then just call it whatever you want. So you could just call it template, hit done, and then save that away. And then every time you start a new project, you just grab that, duplicate it, and use that as your project. However, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to keep doing what I do for now because, yeah, maybe I need to learn some more things. That is going to do it for this one. In the next video, I'm going to show you, because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start recording these tracks. So I'm going to show you how this track is coming together. I have written most of the vocals now as well. So, uh, yeah, you'll be able to take a listen and give me some feedback on those. But I hope you found this useful. There's two more videos all about that garage band link down below you can subscribe by clicking or tapping on the studio live today icon and i'll see you on the next video